The conference is phenomenal, yeah. Um, I've been really happy to be here. I think that it's well organized and um, Bath is beautiful. Like, I, I don't know. So I've been very, very excited to be here, yeah. The conference has been great so far. The pacing is wonderful. All the talks have been great and the people are super friendly. So I'm really enjoying it here. Conference is awesome. I mean, it's a great place. It's a great city, um, and you know, everyone out there is smiling and stuff. So this has been pretty awesome to get to to come to. I'm attending this year after doing a uh, five minute talk last year, and uh, I was I loved the conference then. I was really thrilled to be invited back, and it's a shape built to be a great conference this year. What I'm going to speak about today is called Sonic Pie. Uh, the appeal of Sonic Pie for me is the, the way it combines three things, which is education, uh, technology, and art. And uh, it's, ed it's for education in the fact that it's simple enough for ten-year-olds to use. Uh, it's technology in the fact that it's got a really cool um, abstractions and uh, a timing system that allow you to make music in a very intuitive way. And artistically, it's a brilliant way to uh, express yourself, and being able to use code to do that is a powerful thing, and uh, I hope that more people have the opportunity to do it after today. There's so many people doing so many amazing things um, in so many different domains. You can always find someone who's doing work that you can really respect and you can contribute to um, and you can pair up with. Well, um, I think that as developers, we tend to rely on technologies we're most familiar with. And um, for, from a database perspective, we always use Postgres. And if we're feeling really experimental, we might use Redis. Um, but there are a lot of alternative databases that don't get very much attention. So one of the database technologies that I'm really interested in personally is graph databases, and in particular Neo4j. Please give a warm welcome uh, to Courtney Anna. I would really like to write code that actually impacts people's lives and I think that open source is a beneficial way to do that. So um, one thing that I maintain is called Code Montage and it is a way to find social good open source projects to contribute to, so to help developers essentially become sort of like superheroes and helping projects that wouldn't otherwise get technical help. Then another open source project that I'm, that I'm committed to and that isn't necessarily a code project is being able to create communities for people of color who are developers and that's a project I'll be starting on once I get back to the States. So the title of the talk was The Surprising Neuroscience of Gender Inequality and the relevance of the topic is simply that we have a really startling absence of women in technology and so the talk was really about unpacking what's driving that phenomenon and what we all have to do to turn it around. For me, the real highlight for a personal reason was the talk on uh, the neuroscience of inequality. I found that absolutely fascinating and the fact that it's still something that needs to be addressed even now in 2016. Um, but also just the, the variety of speakers and the way that it's aimed, like the last talk was incredibly technical, but then there's also things that's generally about the culture of coding and the community, which has been really great to be part of. Uh, I'm Zach Holman. Uh, my talk was about firing people. A uh, little bit dreary talk, but that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of came at it from three different perspectives. One, like what happens if you're fired, uh, which has a lot of very personal aspects to consider. Uh, the second was, you know, what happens if you're firing somebody else underneath you if you're a manager type. And the third is, what happens if somebody next to you gets fired? You know, how do you deal with? Uh, how do you talk to them? How do you deal with? You know, them getting fired or you getting fired and stuff like that. So. Uh, I don't know. The subject of my talk today was um, how methods are implemented in Ruby and specifically talking about um, inline caches and polymorphic inline caches. It's important that you, even if you fail, you learn things, but also I want people to be, you know, thinking critically about what they do, taking measurements about their code, like making sure they measure stuff before they actually make changes to it. Uh, some of the other softer things too are like, I don't know, uh, trying to get people to foster a more 
welcoming environment for new people to, as well, and also encouraging new people to ask questions. So I think those are my main points from this talk. I thought Aaron Patterson's talk was the perfect one to end with. It hurt my brain a little bit, but um, yeah, I think that was balanced out by the cat pictures and the patriotism, which is always a good thing. <laughs>